Sumeru Mountain. That's what they called Mount Meru or Mount Sumeru at the North Pole. Supposedly there's a magnetic mountain called Mount Sumeru and it's at the center of the world, the North Pole. Here at the ancient city in Thailand, this is like a recreation. Apparently, this, what I'm on here is a rainbow bridge. I'll show you from the other side. From the side, it looks like a rainbow. That sounds like the Norse mythologies, where they talked about Valhalla, their heaven being over the rainbow, like those Wizard of Oz. over the rainbow bridge and then you're on to Mount Sumeru so here's the rainbow bridge that we just crossed According to Thai cosmology, Sumeru Mountain is considered the pillar of the world as well as the center of the universe. The mountain, supported by Ananda fish, stays above the surface of the water. It is the residence of spirits ranging from deities in heaven to devils in hell. It's just like the Norse. Look at the uh, Yggdrasil tree that goes up into heaven and down into hell. This is the same. So Steve, check this out. It says, according to Thai cosmology, Sumeru Mountain is considered the pillar of the world as well as the center of the universe. See, that's it. It's the North Pole. It's the magnetic mountain. In the middle, it's the center of the universe. So this is a geocentric uh, cosmology that the Thais believed for thousands of years. So let's go across the bridge and see this mountain in the center of the universe. Early explorers said that there was rivers that fed into the mountain and they changed directions every six hours, sucking in and then pushing out, and that's what caused the tides on Earth. And uh, so this 
this big fish here could be representative of these rivers. They're like a whirlpool. They said it would suck the ships right into it, just like a whirlpool. And that the magnetic mountain was so powerful that it would pull the nails right out of the ships. This temple is very magnetic looking, the coloration of it and everything. This is my first time here too, so I have no idea what we're looking at. See some of the artwork inside. this out. So they've got flat earth disc, Sumeru in the middle, it's a lot like the UN thing. They've got Jambudweep down there, it's just like the uh, the Hindu cosmology, it talks about it down here. So you've got Sumeru there, some other mountains, seven, seven, four continents on either side, it's right in the middle. Below is Hell, the demon world, above it we've got six heavens up to Nirvana. It's a lot like the Atlantean myth. It's comparing the actual physical world to the spiritual one with the seven chakras. So you can be taken up high to heaven or you can fall down the seven chakras down there. cosmology system. Three worlds in the cosmology ideal of Hinduism and Buddhism. Sumeru Mountain is the core and center of Earth and Universe, which should be supported by a gigantic fish. Four continents and four oceans. It's just like the four rivers in Ger Gerard Mercator's map. And Sumeru is the magnetic mountain in the middle. So it's not just Mercator saying this. 
This is well known for thousands of years. But nowadays, they tell us there's nothing but ice at the North Pole. Do you believe them? There are many cosmological traditions around the world which share important features of Bhagavata cosmology. These include a cosmic axial mountain or pillar, which is often identified with a local mountain, such as Mount Olympus in Greece. These traditions also include other standard features, including those shown in this generic world model. The cosmology of the Bhagavatam and the Puranas is shared in its broad features by Buddhism, and it is widespread in the Buddhist countries of Asia. This East Asian picture depicts a square version of Mount Meru and the oceans and islands of Bhumandala, surmounted by planetary orbits. This Korean wheel map shows a central continent surrounded by a circular ocean and another circular continent. Joseph Needham, in his treatise on Chinese science, traces these wheel maps to India or Babylon. Here is a Babylonian wheel map. Wheel maps were also made in medieval Europe. In these Judeo-Christian maps, Jerusalem and the sacred hill called Mount Zion were identified as the world axis. Somehow or other, the tradition of Jambudweep seems to have influenced Gerardus Mercator, who placed a mountain surrounded by a circular continent at the north pole of his map of the Arctic region. The four perpendicular rivers or channels flowing from the central mountain correspond to the four branches of the celestial Ganges flowing from Mount Meru. Here is a Phoenician seal with a personified world mountain and four streams issuing forth at right angles. The Dogon tribe, living near the upper bend of the Niger River, posit a circular continent with a central pillar surmounted by the residence of their high god, Ama. Note the world-girdling serpent in the circular ocean. The ethnologist Evans Wentz identifies this Navajo sand painting as a representation of the four sacred directional mountains of the Navajos. In many traditions, the world mountain is surrounded by four mountains in the cardinal directions. And we also see this in the Bhagavatam and other Puranas. The color scheme is similar to that found in Puranic and Buddhist traditions. The four directional mountains of Jambudweep have four sacred trees on their summits. These include the Jambu tree, after which Jambudweep is named. The theme of a cosmic tree of life is very common, and this tree often grows on the world mountain or stands in place of it. Here we see the Scandinavian tree of life, called Yggdrasil. The apocryphal biblical literature describes a tree of life with four rivers of honey, milk, oil, and wine that flow down into Eden. For comparison, the Bhagavatam has rivers of special juices flowing from its four sacred trees. This Assyrian seal shows the tree of life on the world mountain plus two sacred streams. In this East Asian picture, the Tree of Life stands upon the column of Mount Meru, centered on the ring pattern of Bumandala. The Mayans of Central America have a Tree of Life that extends through seven heavens, and they also speak of five lower worlds. Rated heavens and underworlds are found in many cosmologies, including that of the Bhagavatam. Here we see the cosmology of the Shipibo tribe of the Peruvian Montea. This includes the Tree of Life, the circular continent and surrounding ocean, and the world-girdling serpent. The cosmology of the Warao of the Orinoco Delta also features a serpent of being that surrounds their world. Here we see the Norse serpent that surrounds Midgard, the inhabited world of Norse cosmology. The Bhagavatam places a universal serpent called Anantashesha beneath Umandala. He is generally depicted as supporting the earth from beneath, but the Mahabharata also says that he encircles her in his coils. 
The Bhagavatam places the cities of Brahma and the eight Lokapalas on top of Mount Meru. Similarly, many traditions place the abode of the gods on top of their axial mountain or pillar. Here is the geometric layout of the cities of the eight Lokapalas, or world guardians. These figure in the Vastu Purusha Mandala used to lay out temples in traditional Indian architecture. The grid of the Vastu Purusha Mandala is also associated with the nakshatra constellations marking the ecliptic. Thus the earthly side of a temple was connected with the heavenly realm of the ecliptic. The Bhumandala disk represents the exoteric domains of the earth and planets. In contrast, the cosmic axis, extending perpendicular to Bhumandala, is filled with esoteric meaning. It represents the path of ascent or descent of the soul. In addition to the orbits of the sun, moon, and planets, there are different worlds or lokas arrayed above Bhumandala along the cosmic axis. These upper worlds can be entered through mystic cities, and they are accessible only to persons of advanced spiritual consciousness. The Bhagavatam describes the vertical dimension of the Brahmanda as a universal form of God, extending from the lowest world at the soles of the feet to the highest at the crown of the head. In this traditional picture, we see the rings of Bhumandala forming the belt of the universal form. Here the positions of the worlds are indicated in relation to the universal form. The levels in the universal form are associated with the spinal chakras on which yogis meditate, and the spine itself is called Meru Danda, after Mount Meru, the cosmic axis. The ascent of the soul through different levels of the Brahmanda is analogous to the ascent of the life force through the chakras in the body. In general, the vertical dimension of the universe represents the path of ascent or descent of the soul through different worlds and different states of consciousness. It lies perpendicular to the plane of Bhumandala, which is the world of the planetary orbits. <laughs>